Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Uh, today's episode is the VNAV capabilities of the G3000 in the TBM 930. We're using a custom livery today. Uh, it's a bare metal livery. I'll post that down in the description below. We're also using a custom airport today, KGPI Glacier Park International. I will also go ahead and put that down below and you really need to check that add-on out. So uh, today we're also using the TBM add-on for the uh, TBM improvement mod. I will also go ahead and post a link down below for that. We're gonna try to make this as quick as possible. Uh, on the ground, we're gonna get in the TBM, start it up, show you the flight plan we'll try to simplify this as much as possible and if this is your first time joining us on the channel i would love to welcome you and highly suggest you go down there hit that subscribe tick that little bell and smash that thumbs up button so if you want to know more about the tbm the g3000 and the vnav capabilities stay tuned <music> Hello guys! Now we are in the cockpit. As you can see, the weather's different. We had two crashes in a row, so I went ahead and turned off live weather, and I think it'll make it much more pleasant for us to see the ground anyway. So let's go ahead and get this bird started. We're going to input the information in the FMS. So, so to get the TBM started, all we got to do is hit the battery and the alternator. Uh, now that we got that on, we go ahead and throw the fuel pump on, throw the autopilot trim on. I'm not doing this in any particular order. Uh, we're going to hit the auto with the fuel button. Next, we're going to come over, hit the strobe, the nav, and the pulse. Just get them on now. Again, no particular order. Go ahead and turn on the access light, which is right here. It's good for night. And we're going to go ahead and get the thing started so we don't run out of juice here. Uh, if you do have a Bravo Throttle Quadrant, it would probably be really helpful to you to watch my video on how to set up the Bravo Throttle Quadrant for the TBM. I go in full detail in how to do that. So, without further ado, let's start it up. Wow, look at that view out there. Probably be a much better flight anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and get everything we need entered into the uh, computer real quick. I am not going to go through how to enter a flight plan in the computer because we've already done that on a previous video. All links will be down in the description. I'm just going to show you how to basically set everything up for your VNAV. Okay, uh, so now that we're back, uh, we have programmed our entire flight plan in the computer now. Now I'm going to show you some settings you're, need to gonna, you're going to need to turn on for the VNAV to be functional. Uh, one, you're going to need to turn the VNAV on by activating it right there. Secondly, you're going to have to input all of your flight restriction altitudes that you want to follow. It's not going to automatically populate them for you, and you can easily find all of that information right online. Uh, I use a service called ChartFox. I will show you right here. So this is the approach plate, and all I'm going to do is enter all of my flight restriction altitudes into the FMS or GPS unit. So uh, now that they are all entered and you are going to need this information here so that the VNAV can populate all the information up here for you. Uh, also, I highly recommend that you turn on this inset table here for your VNAV. To do that, you would just go down here to map settings, tick on that, tick to inset window, and this allows you to turn that on. I highly suggest you do that. 
Uh, this way you won't have to continually look down. You can also go to your flight plan to your VNAV and this will give you the same information. But this is nicer because it comes up right on the screen. So to keep the video short, uh, I'm going to cut the video as soon as we take off. Uh, then I will try to get to 10,000 feet going southbound, make a U-turn, and then come up to our first waypoint at 10,000 feet. Uh, in which I will then come back at you guys and show you all the functionality of the VNAV. Uh, again, I just want to kind of keep everything as short as possible. What you're going to see on the screen right here is a VNAV profile also pop up here for the VNAV glide path and also the vertical speed that we should be flying. So let's go ahead and get this bird in the air now and we can get to our VNAV descent. And if anybody has any questions along the way, please go ahead and post them down in the comments below. I will go ahead and get those answered for you as quickly as possible. So you're going to see down here in our VNAV profile, the first altitude that we have set here is 10,000 feet. And that is our main That is our main top of climb altitude. Positive rate, gear is up. All right, everyone, we will come back at you once we reach top of climb at 10,000 feet and we will show you the VNAV descent. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back. We are now at our top of climb we are at 10,000 feet, and right here we can see our next waypoint is at 10,000 feet, which is P-E-K-B-E. -E. Uh, after that, we will be descending to 9,000 feet. So, once we reach this P-K-B-E, -E, oh, you're actually seeing it right now. So, we have our glide path that just popped up. We have our top of descent within one minute, and what this is going to happen is this is just like an ILS. So you want to keep this magenta line right here in the middle for you. We know we're going to be descending down through 77,300 feet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Once we get to our top of descent, which is going to be coming really soon. Okay, it looks like the top of descent is right here in the GPS. So that is telling us right here that we have 33 seconds until top of descent. Our target V speed is 1100 feet per minute at our current speed. Now, if we deviate from that and we fall off our glide path, 
this will correct us and tell us what the correct V speed must be. And you also see that the glide path went up a little bit as it comes down. Here would be our target V speed in the descent. So we're coming up that right now. We're going to go ahead and put in vertical speed mode. And we can now dial in and match this magenta line right here, the magenta arc. We should be traveling at about, see it's uh, 1300 feet per minute. We're actually above about 100 feet. So if we keep this on that magenta line, this will keep us on glide path here. And basically what we want to do is once we get near 9,000 feet, we're going to control our altitude with just our V-speed. So as that magenta uh, arc gets higher, we know we're going to bring our V-speeds up because 9,000 feet was where we wanted to be. So our next altitude restriction is 9,000 at GOGS. So we're going to continue this until we get to GOGS. So now as you see, the magenta line is up just a little bit from where we are. That's because our flight restriction is 9,000 feet and we are just below that 9,000 feet, but that's okay. We're gonna hold this right here. Now, once we get to GOGS at 9,000, our next flight restriction is 7,300 feet. So as soon as we get here, 7,300 is gonna populate in the uh, VNAV window here and it will also give you a v-speed target if you if you're too late on it or you're too early the v-speed required will be the correction to the v-speed target and this will show you your vertical deviation from where you are supposed to be so right now we are 84 83 feet under where we're supposed to be at 9,000. but that's okay Now, what we need to do is also go ahead and get the ILS programmed into the uh, computer here for our nav radio. And the uh, easy way to do that is go to Flight Plan, click on KGPI, click on Waypoint Info, Frequencies, and now we can scroll down. All right, well, normally all of your frequencies would be right here. And unfortunately, they are not for this airport, so that's kind of weird. So we're going to have to go ahead and manually enter, and hopefully it's, it's correct. So, 1115, transfer, that is the localizer frequency, uh, 1115, so hopefully uh, it will populate in our NAV1 DME here, we'll see. This should uh, get us in quite nicely as long as we're on top of our game and we don't miss it. So we've really got to keep an eye on it. And uh, let's see, do we have any information here yet? No, nothing yet. So for right now, I guess we can just take in the beautiful scenery outside.
And by the way, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those below. I would love to get those answered for you. So it looks like the NAV-1 radio did pick up the ILS. For some reason, the information is not in the computer system here. But um, as you see, the ILS is showing here. So what we're going to do, uh, we are almost there. Once we probably get about a half a mile out, we're going to flip over to our NAV-1 radio so we can pick up on the localizer frequency. Again, you also want to get a, you, you always want to get a good localizer lock before you pick up the glide slope and before you hit the approach button all right looks like we're making our turn we're going to put in localizer mode now as you can see our top of descent just went to one second and top of descent now we need to be right around a thousand feet per minute And that's right where we are, a thousand feet per minute. We are dead on, as good as we can get. All right, and we have picked up the glide slope right now, but we are not gonna get a glide slope block, I believe, until 5,800 feet. So it's important that we follow this de descent profile here, and we keep monitoring just where we need to be here. descending 900 feet per minute, 950 feet per minute. So we're going right about what we're supposed to. We're actually going to go a little bit more. All right, so we are just about at 7,300 feet, which is where we would start leveling off because that is the flight restriction at J-O-L-E-K. Okay, so as soon as we pass that, we now have to, our next flight restriction is at 5,800 feet. And that is also where we're gonna pick up the glide slope right there. At this point, I'm also going to go ahead and put in the approach mode. Add a little bit more descent to us uh, because you always, I always like to intercept the glide slope from below. So I like to be below the glide slope so that when I'm coming in, that glide slope is coming down and then we capture it at that point. But we know we got to be at 5,800 feet. We will be at 5,800 feet by the time we get to HOTRU, uh, as well as you can verify that by the little arc right there. And we just now intercepted the glide slope. So we are now on localizer. We are on glide slope. We're going to go ahead and put our gear down, pull back on the throttles now. ahead and add our first notch of flaps.
And again, I hope you're enjoying the video today, and I hope you get some great information out of this. If you did, a sub to the channel would be flying high. Now, uh, according to our screen right here, it says we only have four knots coming from behind us and from our side, but it sure feels like more than four knots of wind. So what I'm gonna do right now, looks like we are above the glide path, so I'm gonna turn off autopilot and we're gonna take it in manually from here. Just a little bit. Playing with the camera got me off. That didn't sound right. Playing with the camera pushed me off course a little bit. Now the whole time your hand is on the throttle because you are constantly having to adjust throttle, rudder, aileron, pitch, the whole time coming in here, especially when you've got some wind, and I will tell you it's more than four knots, that's for sure. All right, everyone, so that is the flight for the day. I want to thank everybody for joining us. It was a pleasure serving you today. If you have any questions, go ahead and post those down below. I'd be happy to answer those for you. If you want to check out the airport that we're at right now, links will be down in the descriptions below. It looks pretty nice from here, so uh, go down there and check it out. While you're down there, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It really helps out the channel, lets us know we're doing a good job, and you don't want to miss any future videos just like this one. Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us at 2020 Flight Simmers, and as always, keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one.